All right, thank you, media, for coming for this status update regarding five-year-old missing Darnell. We have a portion of the 911 call that we'd like to play for you now. Um, the complete audio recording will be um, made available to you after this update. Um, as you heard um, from the portion of the 911 call that you heard, we have reason uh, to, significant reason to believe that um, Darnell could be in danger. Um, as a result, felony of the third degree child endangerment charge um, was filed, as well as felony of the first degree kidnapping charge was filed on PAMI May. Um, Based on this investigation, you know, we're going to continue to follow every lead that we have. We've uh, worked along with our local, state, and federal partners up to this point to follow every single lead, and we will continue to do so until we've located Darnell as well as Pammy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring uh, Deputy Chief Weir up now so that he can go over a couple of more videos for you. Thank you, Chief Bryant. Good afternoon. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple of the, the, the uh, updates in the case. Uh, at the direction, Chief Bryant, we have uh, activated the major case investigative team uh, who are investigating this along with our Special Investigations Bureau um, and our state and federal partners as well. Uh, during the course of our investigation, do you want next thing? Um, we wanted to show, um, as officers were responding to the scene, that 911 call you just listened to uh, came in at 3.03 in the morning. As uh, one of our officers were responding to the scene, uh, they I think this is near the intersection of Livingston and, and uh, Lockbourne. They are driving to the scene. Uh, we have what we believe is video of the uh, suspect vehicle uh, passing by our cruiser. Uh, they'll go ahead and play it. So those are the headlights as the car is passed. Uh, there's no front plate on the car, so that, that tag uh, was not visible to the, uh, to the responding officer, who, of course, was responding to an emergency run uh, several miles down the road off Lockbourne and, and Reeb. So uh, that's kind of uh, sets the stage for then that Jeep traveling north and ending up in the Cleveland area two hours later. Um, we have, uh, during the course of our investigation, if you, um, that is the, te the uh, picture of the vehicle right there with the registration on it. Obviously, we've recovered that. We recovered it at approximately 5.50 in the morning uh, through the help of Brooklyn Police near the Cleveland area. Uh, we have been in constant contact over the past uh, about 36 hours with Brooklyn Police and Lindale Police and agencies throughout Northeast Ohio. We are asking for the residents of Northeast Ohio, specifically the people that live in the area of Memphis 
117th, the village of Lindale, the, village, the city of Brooklyn, and the city of Cleveland in Northeast Ohio, uh, to look at that picture and tell us if they saw that car anywhere in the early morning hours of Wednesday morning, uh, probably between the hours of 5 a.m. And, and 6 a.m. Uh, if you saw anybody in that car, if you saw them stop at a business, if you own a business, you own a gas station, um, any kind of carryout store, anywhere that they might have stopped for a break, if you saw the occupants of that car, please let us know. Uh, you can call our tip line at 614-645-2228. Um, and we are actively trying to get more tips about the location and the whereabouts of that car in that early morning hours of Wednesday morning. So I will uh, return it to uh, Chief Bryant. As you can see up on the screen, uh, we just wanted to provide um, some additional pictures um, of uh, Pammy May. We want to be able to, if anyone has seen or think they may have seen her, to please, again, contact that tip line. No matter how insignificant of a tip you may think it is, we are asking, we are pleading for residents to reach out and let us know. We, we are looking for a timeline. If you've, if you've seen uh, Darnell, if you've seen Pammy May for the past week, we are asking, again, for the public's assistance to reach out and give us that information. That tip line, again, is 614-645-2228. That's 614-645-2228. I'm also going to plead to Pammy if she's watching this. Pammy, if you're watching this, could you please reach out and contact us? We need to know that Darnell is safe. We are asking you, Pammy, and we're, we, we need to know if you're safe. Reach out, contact us, let us know that you're okay. We're asking for the public's assistance. We've great, greatly appreciated the tips that we have gotten thus far, and we've left no, step, no tip unturned. If we get a tip, we're gonna follow it. Please, we are imploring to the public, if you've seen anything, no matter how insignificant you may think it is, reach out to us and call the tip line 614-645-2228 and with that we'll open it up for any questions uh, Chief, Amy Cisex here on Stephanie Dupree. I had a question about Pammy May. During the investigation have you guys learned anything about her backstory or her history? Does she have a history of mental illness? Uh, we are still investigating again and finding out any tips or any leads that may uh, give us insight into why this occurred so I can't speak uh, to her mental status because we have not gotten anything uh, from any doctor or anything like that. Do we know when the last time is that Darnell was seen by anybody? We're still trying to figure that out, which is why we're asking for people to call in to the tip line and give us any information, no matter how insignificant you may think it is. If you saw him in the past week, please let us know. Mr. Uh, May has been fully cooperative with us. Um, he has come in and he's answered our questions. So at this point, he's been fully cooperative. Do you know if Darnell's in the area? We have no idea, which is why we are again pleading to the public and, and asking for assistance. Have you found out if Pammy has any contact with anyone in the Cleveland area? Does she know someone there? Do we know why she drove there? We're still investigating and looking for that information as well. And we're pleading not just to our local community, but to anyone in Cleveland or even outside the state. If you have information, if you saw that vehicle, please contact us and let us know. Chief, I know you've, uh, you've already answered this a little bit already, but you know I was in Cleveland yesterday, and there, you know, there wasn't a lot of a police presence there with, with Brooklyn PD, but is there any way or anything that you know that, that tipped off police to where the vehicle was and where it was parked and how, where it was and after it was towed? Is there, do you have any links to what tipped off police well, we know that there was a flock um, camera that hit on uh, uh, the license plates of that vehicle. So the tips that we've been receiving, the technology that we've been using has been very grateful or, or, or very beneficial in helping us to be able to locate the vehicle and get the information that we have thus far. But we still need a lot of help. We're asking for the public to please let us know. Have you know long he was at pre-K or kindergarten or was he in school at this time, Darnell? I, I don't know that answer, so I can't. Alive or 
at, at this point, we don't have any information regarding that. Um, obviously, it is part of the investigation, so we're going to do everything that we can to process that. We are asking for um, anyone that may have seen anything that could have led up to this. So yes, we're looking for any information, not just from that particular day, but for anything for the week. Thank you. Oh, thank you.